What's going on, guys? Hope everybody's doing well. Happy New Year. It's 2020. Uh, it's been a little bit since I've done, I've done a video. Um, I will try and do more videos in 2020, as I believe it's going to be a great year for crypto, especially for DeFi, as we're seeing more and more good things in the news about DeFi. One thing that I actually saw recently was uh, I was on the Defiant, I believe when I read about it, Zero Collateral, which is a new protocol slash tool that allows you to, as it states, as the tool states, get a loan with l as little as zero collateral. This is something that I've mentioned in videos in the past where uh, in order for DeFi to actually really, really prosper, we need a way to actually really challenge the legacy financial uh, institutions. And one of those, one of the ways right now specifically is we need a way to get loans, give loans and get loans that don't require you to back that loan, especially over collateralize the loan like you have to with Maker, um, but eventually build trust, build a, um, a relationship with a borrower or with the DeFi ecosystem in order to actually get a loan with zero to little collateral um, you know, obviously, if you pay the loan back correctly. Before we jump into the tool, um, I got some details to get into here. I just wanted to go over the DeFi market in general. Um, things have been moving along uh, since the last video I made. Uh, you know, we had a little drop here back in, um, you know, late uh, in September, early October, but things climb back. Uh, as it stands right now, we just hit. Um, an all-time high, I believe, with total value locked into the DeFi system with uh, $700 million locked into the DeFi uh, ecosystem. And as far as uh, as Ether goes, it looks like we have just hit 3.059 million Ether locked in the DeFi ecosystem, which is definitely an all-time high. So the DeFi ecosystem is moving along. It's doing well. Uh, obviously, we have still have our main players here, um, Maker, Compound, Instadap. Um, now, there was something, <laughs> Synthetics really had a fall off here. Um, I wonder why it's not even showing what's going on here. Let's see. Yeah, I'm not sure why. it's There, there was a pretty big drop in Synthetics. A whale, I think, unloaded um, some of the Synthetics. But uh, you can see the drop here. Um, so it's not ranked it was number two for the longest time, um, and it's still on here. But um, you know, you have your your normal normal top three up here: Maker, Synthetics, Compound. I'm sorry, Synthetics is up here. What is this? I cr I stand corrected. Um, I'm not sure why it wasn't up there when I just looked at it. Uh, I'm not crazy. You guys saw that as well. Um, so you can see it did have a big drop uh, just recently. There was a um, a sharp. I think somebody tried to sell a bunch of synthetics tokens on uh one of the um on uniswap i think and so a bunch of people saw this and then on the centralized exchanges got ahead of them because you know uniswap being a dex is a little bit slower uh but all in all the the whole ecosystem as a whole is doing well and uh like i said i think 2020 is going to be an exciting year uh coming back around to zero collateral uh, as I stated before, we've needed something like this, or we need something like this in the DeFi ecosystem in order to compete with the uh, centralized financial system, uh, in order to get loans that actually don't require you to plop down a ton of, of um, currency, we'll just say currency, uh, in order to get a loan. And uh, the way this works is pretty special. <laughs> it's pretty interesting, but I do believe that uh, it is only on the Rossman testnet right now on Ethereum. And I think if everything works out on the testnet, um, they will move it to obviously the production Ethereum network, the main net. But I quickly just wanted to go over how it works and um, what we possibly could be looking forward to as far as having a new way to get loans in the DeFi ecosystem um, and actually build a reputation that allows you to get loans that don't require you to plunk down a bunch of ether in order to get a, um, the die that you get now with Maker. Uh, it starts out, I'm not going to read this whole thing. I know some of you don't like me reading all of this stuff, which is fine. 
I like criticism, even if it's bad. But uh, you know, it quickly kind of goes over the um, the fact that most of the unsecured debt in the central financial system, or like I call it, the legacy financial system, eighty um, percent of it is actually unsecured debt. Um, most of the um, the debt or the loans that are given out. Um, and then, like I said, in order to compete, we have to be able to do the same in DeFi, but actually figuring out if somebody is trustworthy and still keeping things decentralized is a little tricky. Um, so that's where zero, zero collateral protocol comes in. And zero collateral protocol is an unsecured, under collateralized lending market on the Ethereum blockchain. Here, borrowers must only maintain collateral equivalent to the value of the loan minus the amount of the, to of the total interest paid from all previous loans. With frequent loan repayments, the required, required collateral needed for borrowing eventually drops to zero. So what that means is that if, um, as so you can only do one loan per uh, wallet address and um, your first loan, you have to put the full money up front. Um, say you put up, um, let's say you put up a hundred dollars worth of Ethereum and the interest rate is 20%. Um, that means that you paid $20 in, uh, ether for, um, for the loan. So you end up paying $120 total. Well, on your next loan, if you wanted to get another hundred dollars, you'd only have to put up $80 of collateral because you can actually subtract, um, you can actually subtract the interest you paid, uh, which actually goes towards your next loan. So, and then as that keeps scaling, uh, eventually you can build that up to where you don't have to put any collateral down. So it's a pretty interesting concept. Um, the way that they prevent people from like running away with all the money um, is they have a tracking system that, that makes sure that these each address is actually behaving like it should. Um, so it says the DAI stablecoin is utilized as the digital asset medium deposited into the market by lenders that receive ZDAI in return. ZDAI can be redeemed for DAI by withdrawing supply from the market. Lenders can earn up to 643% interest per year. This maximum, maximum supply um, annual percentage rate is based on 100% borrowing of deposited DAI with a compounding rate of 20% per month. So this 20% uh, figure is actually a monthly um, interest rate, which it's not an annual interest rate. So it is pretty high, but obviously the people that are doing this kind of stuff are putting a lot of risk lending to somebody that might not possibly pay it back. Even if they did a bunch of other previous loans that allowed that show that they were trustworthy, and then all of a sudden they just, they don't pay it back because there's always that chance, right? And it might be hard to find these people um, if you ever even could get the money back. In practice, this percentage is typically not reached due to the lack of 100% borrowing and outstanding borrower, borrows not being repaid. Uh, DAI can be borrowed from the market with a set interest rate of 20% and with a payback date of 172,800 blocks, which is around 30 days per borrow. For version one, the interest owed is equivalent throughout the loan duration. Uh, day one interest equals the interest on day 30. So it doesn't matter when you pay back the loan during the month, you're going to have to pay the full um, interest. So if you borrow one die uh, with an interest rate of 20%, uh, you have 30 days to pay back 1.2 die. I think that makes sense for everybody that's ever dealt with math. Uh, each wallet is allowed a maximum of one active borrow. A borrow is deemed inactive upon completion of repayment of the principal plus the interest, thus unlocking the ability to create a new borrow. So just like it says, uh, you can only do one borrow per wallet address and all of your uh, reputation, so to speak, is linked to that address. Uh, creating a new borrow after repayment results in an increase of the maximum borrow by one half the interest rate. For example, if the first borrow is one die, then the following maximum borrow will be set to 1.1 die. So I, I stand corrected, it's actually not the full interest rate, it's half the interest rate for the increase, which is interesting didn't sound like that when they were selling it at the beginning. Um, yeah, so it's, I guess it's easier doing this with just one die as an example. Um, so if you borrowed one die, you had a 20% interest rate per month. At the end of the month, you pay back 1.2 die. Um, and you, oh, this is actually, I'm sorry, this is actually for um, 
how much you can borrow. So this is how much your increase is going to be. So you have your increase amount and you actually have um, how much collateral you have to put down. So I believe that the interest rate, like they said, is actually, um, so in addition to being able to borrow 1.1 die instead of one die, um, because you uh, paid 0.2 die in interest, if you were to get a new loan for 1.1 die, you would only have to actually put down 0.9 die for collateral. Um, if you guys did the math in your head, I think that makes sense. Uh, the collateral needed by the borrower equals the borrowed amount minus the total interest paid back. After each successful payback, less collateral is required. At the current rate, the borrower will not need collateral after eight borrow plus payback cycles. So yeah, after eight times of getting a loan through this system and paying interest, you will not have to pay for, you don't have to put collateral down for a loan, which is pretty nice. Um, and I can kind of see how this is working out for the lender because after eight borrows they have got they earned quite a bit of interest uh, or i should say the DeFi ecosystem this tool has has gained quite a bit of interest um from um the DeFi customer or the um the zero collateral customer so if they do do a full loan it might be a wash if they were to run or run off with the money um, so here's an example of why they can't necessarily just run away with the money. If the loan is never paid back, a liquidation is run on the wallet. This resets the wallet's maximum borrow and collateral needed to the initial amounts, meaning that one die and 100% respectively. Uh, since the borrower has either A, contributed to the redemption pool by paying interest or B, maintained deposited collateral, assets are not lost. Any borrow collateral is sent to the redemption pool. The total value accrued by lenders will be the redemption pool interest plus the collateral deposited minus the borrowed amount. So this is basically, they're explaining how they'll get their money back um, through the math that I went through above. Uh, if um, the, it's not really lost because of the interest that they made on the person already um, building up to the zero collateral uh, loan that they would get after eight borrows. Um, so it's, yeah, so on a loan default, the total interest paid would be 100% of the borrowed capital. The borrow, borrower would exit the market with 10% less money than on the loan initiation and lenders would recover their funds with 50% plus 50% of the borrower's borrow interest or averaging 10% interest per borrow instead of the initial 20%. So this sounds like an interesting way to um, allow people to borrow, but at the same time, protect the lenders from losing money. Um, I wasn't sure how we were going to be able to get here, but obviously the smart people in the DeFi ecosystem were able to figure it out, the DeFi community. And um, it looks like this might work. Uh, one interesting thing too that, the, that they brought up here was um, further integrations include loan usage data and bank, bank integrations. Loans offered on the zero collateral protocol can even be specialized like mortgages or student loans. Real-time data, for example, home activity, or, home activity or student grades can be streamed to the protocol through Stratosphere. Bank spending data can further be used as collateral itself against the decentralized loan. And it says up here, initial, and they're talking about centralized finance integration. Initial CFI integrations will surround identity and risk management. Credit platforms, including Credit Karma and Experian, are an immediate step to creating true on-chain credit identities. Uh, CFI data platforms such as NerdWallet and risk management systems will lead to better informed lenders and data-based lending markets. So they could actually use these centrally, central financial, um, the, the CFI integrations uh, centralized finance integrations to get a better idea of how trustworthy somebody is based on their, like I like to call it, their legacy financial credit score, uh, which is another data point that they can pull in. Uh, this is the actual site here. Um, when you load it, it's zerocollateral.com. You'll actually, if you have MetaMask installed, you'll see it pop up and ask for you to log in um, to because um, it immediately wants to communicate with the testnet. Uh, like I said before, it is on the Rospin testnet. So you can play around with it, but eventually it would be nice if everything works out that we do see it on the main net as a working tool that we can 
continue to experiment with on this DeFi journey. I will have links to zerocollateral.com and the Medium article that I went over in the description. If you like the video, please get a thumbs up. Um, please share it. And if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. I would appreciate it. Um, I, like I said, I will try and make more videos in 2020. Uh, that's all I got. Thanks.